$600 for every two weeks more than you are now. You know, you got a new mortgage, your car's falling apart, you got groceries to buy, you don't have gas. Anytime there's any extra anything, which, all, you know, life happens, uh, there's no money for it. But meanwhile, he's playing with all their lives. I don't know where to go anymore. Running out of options. I still believe in welfare, and I still prefer taxes or any other measure that'll even out the classes. When it's eat what you kill or steal from your brother. And I guess I believe something other and something better. Something if you are workers, you are involved. Right? Yeah. 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 This is 2009, not 1920. Everybody deserves in this country to have decent jobs for decent living. There's no good jobs here in Kenora. It's devastating our community, it's devastating our families, uh, our co-workers. Their families are torn apart because they're going to Alberta or other places to work. It's just terribly sad and something has to be done. I'm retired, but I worry every day about whether there'll be money in my pension plan to pay. I have two boys. One's unemployed and soon to run out of his EI and one's in Fort McMurray, Alberta. Things aren't good. And basically, life in campus gazing has changed drastically since I was younger. Our population has gone down massively. Jobs are being lost. They closed down the mill. They've just reopened it. It closed down for about four weeks. And growing up in campus gazing, it was, it was a great. It was a small, safe community. Um, and it's sad because I'd love to have my kids grow up here. I don't want to see this town kind of disintegrate because of the bad like because of the economy and if jobs are being lost I'd like to come back and show them where I grew up I, I'd even like to come back and live but there's nothing for me here that it's a shame to see these communities fall because of job losses and of economy and how we're getting nothing up here but we're just as important as anything down south where our schools are just as important, our economy is just as important, our jobs and the people here are just as important. My, uh, my expectations a year ago went from trying to uh, get a new career to finding a new job. Now it's just a desperation job. Um, that's, that's what times are like. I mentioned to my friend the other day that I think that my phone number must be wrong on my resume because nobody phones. And uh, it's just really, really discouraging. So I just want a new job. I don't, I don't care where it comes from. I just want to work. I've always worked for the past 15 years and it sucks. We, I to this day still have not been notified that I'm not report to work. We're not getting our severance paid. We didn't get paid for the last week we worked. Never got paid for my last week. Never got severance. Nothing. I got a phone call telling me not to come back to work. I uh, feel for the other retirees who do not have pensions or, inad or inadequate ones. I think that that's something that we should look into to ensure that uh, people do get an adequate pension to be able to live, to rent a home, to uh, take care of health care needs. And I can say that my 20th year is the hardest year I've ever worked. Um, I work with people in a critical care area where uh, nurses uh, go home crying. Where uh, I can honestly say that I get a one 50 minute break in 12 hours, that's all the time I have. The rest of it I'm running around taking care of patients and just finding that the workload is getting harder and harder every day. It's more difficult to go to work. And uh, I'll be done in a few years, but uh, who's behind me to do the work that that we're, we've been doing? Because there's, there's too much and not enough staff to do it with. And uh, young people find the job too hard. And I would uh, suggest to them that uh, another 20 or 30 years of that kind of work is going to be very difficult to do. So it worries me, and I'm I'm sorry to see healthcare after so many years drop down and to the point where you wonder if it's sustainable anymore the way the government's been running it. 
uh, I know kids who are, well, young adults, 23, 24, who are $30,000 in debt, and uh, they don't have a permanent job, and they don't have any way of paying that money back, and all it's going to, they can get a bit of a rebate, an extension, but the uh, interest keeps rolling on that, on that uh, student loan. Poverty and workers' rights are student issues as well. Students are looking down the barrel right now of a job market that's decreasing. And so when it comes, whether it be EI reform or public infrastructure investments, this is all the same issues. And these map over directly with our concerns. I still was unsure what I wanted to do with my life. All I knew is I wanted to make a difference. So anyways, fast forward a few years later and I get a job at GM. Pretty amazing. Good pay, excellent benefits, raising three girls all on my own. I was able to take my kids on vacation, buy a house, buy a North American built minivan. I felt like I hit the jackpot. I know that my life went down the right path. But now, at 30, I'm laid off, two days before Christmas. I tried for a few months, hoping that the news will get better, hoping that I can at least get back to the plant to work over the summer. But the news just gets worse and worse. I come to the realization that I'm not going back. And barely getting by is not cutting it. Slowly, I'm getting further and further behind. I have to make a choice. Do I try to continue to struggle and slowly drown, or do I go bankrupt, give up my house and my van so I can start over with a little breathing room? I put the for sale sign on my lawn two weeks ago.